In this video we're going to take a look at outliers and the interquartile range. So to begin with here let's consider the definition of an outlier. So an outlier is an extreme value or data point that falls outside the general pattern of the data. So as an example here let's consider the ages of people at a birthday party. So I might have someone who is 22 years old, someone who is 30 years old, someone who is 25 years old, say 35 years old, 40, 27, and I've got this value here at the very end of say 160 years old. Okay. Now on inspection, this value here of 160 straight away should kind of set alarm bells off. Okay. Everyone else here kind of falls between 20 and 40 years old. And then we've got this one value here of 160. So in that case, this 160 here would be an outlier. Okay, it's an extreme value. So we'd call that an outlier. Okay. Now, if I remove that outlier from our data set, then we call that the process of cleaning the data. Okay. And the value that we remove, we call that an anomaly. Okay. So if I get rid of that and consider that data set, with, data set without the 160, then we call that the um, clean data set. Okay. So how does this relate to the interquartile range? So the IQR. Well, if we just give the mathematical definition first of the interquartile range, that would be Q3, the upper quartile, minus Q1, the lower quartile, okay? And that shouldn't be anything new. You should remember that from GCSE maths, okay? So the interquartile range is often used to identify outliers within a data set. And the reason for that is because the interquartile range only contains the middle half of the data, okay? So what we're going to do now is take a look at a practice question here where we can identify outliers within a data set using the interquartile range. So taking a look at this question here then what we've got is exam data from a class in a local secondary school for math results and they're recorded. Now the lower quartile is recorded as 41 so that's Q1 is equal to 41. And then we're told that the upper quartile is recorded as 59 so that means Q3 is equal to 59. Okay. Now the secondary school defines a value greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1 or a value less than Q1 minus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1 as an outlier. Okay. So we're asked to determine whether the following marks are outliers. So where do we begin here? Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these calculations. So I've got Q3 plus 1.5 times Q3 minus Q1. So any value greater than that would be an outlier. And any value less than Q1 minus 1.5 times what is essentially the interquartile range here as an outlier. So in this case, let's evaluate Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so Q3 minus Q1, this is the interquartile range. And in this case, this will be equal to 59 minus 41, which would give me 18. Okay, so what I need to do now is find this value here. So any value greater than that would be an outlier. And then this value here, so that any value less than this is also an outlier. So in that case then, Q3 plus 1.5, lots of the interquartile range here, which is 18. So let's call it the interquartile range. So Q3 is 59 plus 1.5 times 18. Okay. So I just do this on my calculator here, just so I don't make any mistakes. So 59 plus 1.5 times 18. Okay. I'm putting that into my calculator here. What I get is 86. Okay, so that's equal to 86. I'm now going to do the same here for um, Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So Q1 minus 1.5 lots of the interquartile range here. In this case, then I'm going to get 41. That's Q1. So 41 minus 1.5 times 18. Okay, again, just put this into your calculator here. So 41 minus 1.5 times 18, and I get 14 there. Okay. So what we're saying here then is any value less than 14 would be an outlier, and any value greater than 86 would be an outlier as well. Okay. So let's start with the first mark here of 6. Well, 6 is less than 14, so if less than, so this will be an outlier. If less than 14 
and greater than 86. Okay, so 6 is less than 14. So for A here, 6 is less than 14. Therefore, 6 is an outlier. So 6 is an outlier. That's part A. For part B then, so we've got 70 here. So 70 is greater than 14. So that, that means it won't be an outlier in that case. But it's less than 86. So um, 70 is greater than 14. And 70 is less than 86. Therefore, not an outlier. So not an outlier. And then finally for C here, we've got 92. Well, 92 is greater than 14, but it is um, greater than 86. Okay, so because it's greater than 86, then that means it will be an outlier. So 92 is greater than 86. So therefore, um, 92 is an outlier. Okay. And there we have it. That's all we need to say there for A, B, and C there. Okay. So that gives us a solution. So that question, and that brings us the end of this video on outliers and the inter range. In the next video, we're going to take a look at box plots.